Hello, I'm Art Pinsoff. Today, I'm interviewing my friend Jazz Brown. This is my second time interviewing him. My first time for this brand new series I'm calling Art to Art, where I interview people and ask them about their creative work and their spirituality and the relationship between the two. To see my previous interview with Jazz on my Ocean to Ocean series of talking to people about non-duality, you can find that in the description for this video. Also in the description for the video, you can find timestamps. So if you want to skip ahead to where we talk about the artwork, or if you get bored, you can look at that to see if there's another topic that you might find interesting. For mobile devices, that will be listed in the comments. And finally, if you would like to support my endeavors in doing interviews like this, please subscribe, click like, leave a comment. And if you feel so inclined, there's a PayPal link below where you could donate directly to me to help me make more videos like this. With that being said, please enjoy the interview. Hey, Jazz. Hey, man. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, thanks. I, at the last minute, I was trying to choose my background. This is an album cover I, I helped design. Um, so I thought I'd have some of my own art, some of my own, what's well, not my artwork per se, but um, it was a, I came up with the concept of it and my old roommate, Kyle Carter, made it and it's um, nice. Thanks. Yeah, I like the um, the intricacy of it, all the the weaving, you know, in and out. Yeah, that that's Kyle Carter's mastery. Um, he's really good. I I just chose the what went inside the interweaving, like okay, like there's like a Catholic stained glass window and an Islamic mosaic here, and then I think this is an approximation of an image of the very distant no 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 behind us is the distant universe behind me and then this is what's going on inside the brain and this is what's going on inside uh, the hadron particle collider okay nice so just sort of combining yeah and and then over here we got fire water and smoke for air okay yeah just very cool <laughs> so I'm starting off my interview about your artwork by talking about some artwork I was involved in. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bunch of artwork loaded up um, we could go through that you made. And of course, you've got what's behind you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I got your artwork. Um, I'm not going to go over your Facebook quotes because I figured if we ever talk again, that would be a kind of another fun thing to do. Sure. Yeah, but... Um, Can you hear okay? Am I uh, audible? You're good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so um, would you like to maybe begin by talking about some of the art behind you? Um, sure. Um, I don't know where to start, but ultimately um, it's all, you know, one expression, uh, you know, from the one consciousness. Um, like I told you before, uh, this may be new for some other folks, but um, if you can see, especially, I guess, uh, this guy here, uh, all the sides, the borders are uh, painted black. And that's simply because I start with black uh, gesso. I uh, use that for the, the surface of the painting, uh, painted all black. 
you know, almost to emulate, you know, the, the void, the abyss, the, the one consciousness. And then I build on top of that black, you know, simply to express the one expression. Um, as far as talking about the individual pieces, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you want to hear. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, I don't know. This, this is all an experiment. It's my first time trying this out with an artist. Okay. Um, I, I, well, I guess I did an interview with my friend Angel, who's a musician, mm -hmm. and we talked about, like, she had lyrics and song titles and album titles we could talk about. So in your case, we could just talk about what you chose to title your paintings as a jump off point to your, um, you know, philosophy or your interpretation of consciousness and whatever else comes out of your titles. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's so many paintings and so many titles. <laughs> um, some I remember, some, you know, I, you know, <laughs> can't even remember, you know, it's just, you know, it's kind of what's going on, you know, in the moment for the most part, you know, just a, a spark, you know, just a, you know, something that's, you know, is inspirational. You might have a dream about something and uh, it essentially informs the painting. Um, this large piece here, um, I guess you can see it. Yeah. Um, it was a painting um, I first did probably about two years ago. Uh, I just moved into this new apartment and I was kind of debating whether I should uh, get an actual studio, rent a studio to actually paint in versus painting in my apartment because this apartment is a lot smaller than my original. Uh, so I uh, first two months in this place, I just kind of, you know, sat with it and, you know, woke up one morning and just decided to knock that piece out. Um, trying something new. Uh, most of the work I was doing previously was hard edged. Um, kind of like this piece, um, just a lot of sharp angles, uh, really bold colors, uh, not a lot of uh, uh, texture involved for the most part. And that piece, I just decided to, you know, grab some painting knives and just kind of go wild. You know, I thought it was wild at the time, but, uh, and I named that piece uh, Unmanned, you know, just to simply say that, you know, there wasn't a man behind the painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Unmanned, I like that. Yeah, and, you know, that was just the inspiration behind that piece. And that piece is, you know, kind of like the, the parent of everything else that I, you know, I'm doing now. So, uh, you know, for that reason, I don't, you know, I can't uh, foresee selling that piece. You know, I'd have to get a good price for it. But it's just, you know, <laughs> It, I look, I look at it, and I'm reminded of uh, you know just so much that has come you know afterwards, and even the stuff I was doing previously. Like that was a, a huge uh, breaking point. Cool, man. Yeah, that that's yeah. Is, is is there anything else you'd like to comment on this idea of breaking points? I, I like that idea that because I feel like I've just been through one of these recently as an interviewer. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm starting my own channel. This will probably be the third video of original content on my new channel. Okay. And my first video was with um, this ph this philosopher guy, Robert Saltzman, and just taking this really intense dive into talking to him or researching his books and his stuff and then mm -hmm. talking to him, wound up talking to him twice, a total of five and a half hours just about. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and it's all here on the channel. And um, yeah, and people have been enjoying it. But but for me, it's like, I mean, I can't even, I can't really simplify or say why, but it was also a turning point for me, a breaking point mm -hmm. in terms of kind of just knowing where I'm at with the way I see things in, you know, like on a new level of that. I mean, almost like, because because I, I don't see talking about, you know, non-duality consciousness or any of this stuff as all that different from painting or making music. I, I, I feel like it's just another form of creativity, really. Sure, sure. Because none of it's really going to get at what we're trying to point to, but it's this fun mm -hmm. kind of expression. Sure. Yeah, I mean, they're all, you know, you can look at them as, as signs. You know, they're all pointing towards essentially what is, you know. Sure. Yeah. Words do it, you know, street signs do it, you know, paintings do it, you know, songs. <laughs> it's all the same. Yeah. 
<laughs> street signs. Yeah, I was just on Zoom with someone that had a street sign behind them. I'm trying to yeah, remember. Most, yeah. It's art, you know. Uh, it's, you know, it's colorful, you know, it's uh, angular. You know, I look at street signs all the time. And, you know, previously, you know, not as much now because, like I said, the work isn't as hard edged as it was before. But I would look at street signs and just be like, wow, you know, just the, the simplicity of it, you know, and, you know, try to emulate it, you know, in the work. Yeah, I mean, design is the intersection and the difference between, like, I guess, fine art and design itself is fascinating. And you, mm -hmm. it does bring to mind, like, yeah, and I, I guess I want to make it very clear, like, the guy who made this behind it was my roommate, Kyle Carter. I just, I'm not sure if I clarified that. And I mean, I, I came up with the ideas of what went inside of it, but, mm -hmm. and he was a brilliant, I mean, okay, so in, in going forward at some point, I'll go. I'll switch over to sh screen sharing mode, and I have a bunch okay. of your paintings that people could see. Also, sure, great. Because there's one I want to ask you about that kind of reminds me of Kyle's work, where it is it look it is a computer design mm -hmm. uh, that I only found one of those that you made. Um, that anyway, I'll ask you about it when we get to it. But um, sure. yeah, but basically, um, yeah. What are your thoughts on the? intersection and difference between design and fine art as a fine artist yourself who uses what could be considered design principles in your artwork. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a difference. I mean, you know, again, you know, street signs are, you know, again, that, that, you know, the, the fine, you know, it, it kind of, you know, uh, acts as a, a barrier in a sense, you know, uh, it's very, it can be very intimidating, you know, to the, uh, to the average viewer, you know, uh, you know, folks walk by a gallery and they see fine art and, you know, they're intimidated to even walk in because they feel like there's going to be, you know, someone inside snobby and everyone else around the, the gallery is going to be snobby and you know, attitudes and, you know, I can't afford this. And, you know, it's all these stigmas that come with fine art. So I get it, but, you know, I don't think there's a difference, you know, creativity is creativity. That's cool. I, okay, so that's a great way to look at it. I, I guess, um, well, the di a difference that I could see is that design is often trying to direct people's attention in a very specific way, mm -hmm. whereas fine art can be more like open to interpretation and you could feel multiple ways about it. Whereas if you feel the wrong way about a red or green light, <laughs> you, know, you might get in trouble. Sure. sure. Yeah. Is, is there is there any particular way that you sort of want people to feel about your art or that you've sort of noticed people tend to feel about it or do you get a wide variety of responses? Uh, for the most part, there's a, you know, there's always a, a feeling of just uh, something innate, you know, something that uh, is not speaking to the person that's speaking, you know, beyond the person. You know, I'm always uh, told that um, just, you know, from the, you know, I don't know if it's initially from the, the black borders, you know, but there's always something uh, where folks are, I wouldn't necessarily say moved by it, but just uh, uh, it, it asks, you know, you just to be still, you know, and just to, to you know, to simply be. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of the magical thing about art and music in general, to me, one of them is it's that <clears throat> I feel like it is kind of its own language that can communicate something that can't be in words. Like I remember there was this one like album I liked of gu just guitar feedback uh -huh. um, by Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth. And, okay. and it was like this, it had like this 20 minute song of just guitar feedback and I've heard a lot of noise and guitar feedback. I was a part of a noise music scene for a while after that, actually. But there was something about that specific album and what I felt from just the feedback. It was, it's indescribable, but it had an emotion to it mm -hmm. that, that he was, that transmitted. And, and, and we might've talked about this last time, you know, I grew up in Houston where they have the, the Rothko chapel. Yes. And I, I of Mark Rothko's final paintings, which are these enormous, um, very close to black mm -hmm. paintings, but they're, yeah. 
when you go inside the chapel and your eyes adjust over time, you start to notice all the different hues of blue and green and brown. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I mean, there's something that communicates from those paintings. That's just incredible. Sure. Like powerful, you know, and, um, yeah, I mean, well, that's a sign that you're a true artist, that th this is having an impact on the people who see it, that, you know, where they're really, you may be giving people a glimpse into who they are beyond who they think they are. Even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. I mean, there's not necessarily a goal, you know, but uh, that's when, you know, when I first started painting, um, each painting I could feel that I was shedding something, you know, to the point where now, you know, there's no more shedding to do. <laughs> and it's simply just expression, you know? <laughs> I love that. Oh man, man, have you called one that yet? Like there's no more shedding left to do? <laughs> um, Probably, you know, again, you know, it's been a while, but yeah, yeah you know. When, when did that shedding stop? Oh uh, gosh, I'd probably say, you know, you know, in time, three, four years, maybe. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Because I, I was going back through your work on your Facebook um, photo albums. That's mm -hmm. and and I noticed a distinct shift about three or four years ago in right. your work and your presentation of it and all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just all of a sudden it just got way more like, I don't even know how to put it. Just like, uh, like the word that comes to mind is like timeless or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say like the final, you know, layer to, you know, that I, you know, took off essentially was the artist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to get rid of the artist. You know, the artist was a, a limitation, you know. Yeah. You know, the artist has all these expectations and, you know, procedures and rules. And yeah, to, to take off the artist, you know, that was that was liberating. That's cool. It, yeah. And then what's left? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Yeah. What, yeah. It's it's you know, it's the indescribable. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um. All right. So. <clears throat> oh yeah. I was, I was also just curious about. Okay. So that was like a big shift as an artist, mm -hmm. taking off the artist. Sure. What was that also a shift? Was, was that basically um, also a time, an apparent time? of a shift of your mental perspective on things. I mean, well, it sounds like that's what you're saying almost. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was the same thing, you know, uh, with the artists came all the, the history and the baggage and, you know, expectations, memories, you know, depending on other artists, you know, for inspiration, you know, all that stuff, you know, yeah, yeah it all. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess for me, something like that might've just happened in the last year or two or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and I honestly haven't made much music since that's happened. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wrote one song. I mean, I've also had some injuries I'm recovering from, so that's made it hard. Mm -hmm. I can't, my hand isn't really able to do guitar and stuff right now or paint. Sure. But um, yeah, but I wrote one song on guitar since this, where like the lyrics are kind of about, you know, that that which can't be spoken about which i'll go back when i'm fully healed and see how i yeah see where the music goes see if there is music because kind of what i want to get to is like but honestly i listened back to it once and it felt for me at least what i came up with i think it was a good song like mm -hmm. i was really into it at the time and playing it for people and they liked it but when, the last time i listened back to it it felt a little corny to me a little <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why but i mean but but I guess this is kind of the reason why is that in the past I really defined myself as a musician and artist really through like um, kind of what you're saying about shedding. It was a way for me mm -hmm. to like psychologically the character to process things. It was a way to like vent and try to like tap into the unconscious of the character. And like now it's like and it was also like trying to get something, trying to get some yeah. kind of approval from others or <laughs> Mm -hmm. trying, to, trying to like attract you know like like a cool partner or something mm -hmm. it was like i viewed it all as like this bird song trying to achieve something when i was honest with myself about it 
Right. And I don't even know if I was that honest with myself about it until that changed. So I guess I'm just curious for you, like back in the first few years of you making artwork, mm -hmm. were, I mean, can you relate to what I'm saying a little bit or? Sure. It? Yeah. Um, again, you know, um, it was shedding, but, uh, you know, paradoxically, it was more <clears throat> looking at all the, you know, all the bullshit, you know, I was painting the bullshit, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I could see it, you know? I mean, there was a, a, a true breaking point where I was using like the, you know, this colors of the spectrum, you know, the red, uh, orange, yellow, green, uh, light blue, dark blue, uh, violet, you know, doing a painting and uh, the vibration that was literally emanating from the painting, like I had a panic attack, you know, it wow. was just, it was just like, uh, it was like looking in a mirror, you know, and wow. not liking what I'm seeing. <laughs> like it was, it was, you know, I could, you know, if I saw that painting today, I would be like, wow, that's a beautiful painting. But uh, then it was, it was terrifying, you know? Dude, I, I can so relate to that. Like, I, yeah. I, I've i made pieces of music that had that exact effect on me. Yeah. Where, it, <laughs> where it, it gave me a panic attack and I was like, and I knew that would, meant it was like honest, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I'm glad that's not where I'm at now. Sure. Um, making art that gives me a panic attack or music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was, you know, just, it was, again, it was beautiful art. Yeah. But it, I, you know, it was like looking in a mirror and now I know, you know, I don't have a reflection. Right. So yeah. then I was still thinking physically, I was thinking, you know, um, objectively, you know, uh, subjectively, you know, it was all these traps and, you know, um, prisoners that we create essentially. And, you know, it was kind of like, uh, I'm not sure if you remember, I can't remember which, Superman movie it was, but it was, uh, I think it was Zod. Uh, they, he got trapped in a glass in a mirror. And he's, you know, uh, the, the glass is just kind of going away. He's trapped in it. Like I felt like I was trapped in the painting in a sense. And, oh. you know, eventually I realized that I can't be trapped in a painting. That's absurd, you know? So <laughs> it kind of, it kind of, uh, you know, expressed that, you know, in the same sense, I can't be trapped in life. You know, that's absurd. You know. Yeah. Can you be trapped in a body? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. You know. <laughs> you know, limit. You know, all reality to this one body. You know, that's 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 not wise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the way I see that sort of thing these days, um, and feel free to disagree if you have a different take, but the, the way I'm seeing it is like, you know, just. I mean, I saw this one crazy video a couple of weeks ago that was like a simulation of just basic fundamental particles interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. Like it was like a computer simulation, but it was based on actual like laws of physics and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and it was like showing how these particles just being totally left alone will over time create structures that look and act like life. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just happening, and and so sure. like, and and so like the idea of like there being a me in this body or whatever, it's like I'm like yeah, that's a cool feeling to have, but that's <laughs> just something that's emerging out of all the interactions in the brain and the body and the energy. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it, nothing wrong with it. It's just yeah. it's not the it's not the end of it all, you know. It's not real ultimately, you know. And and if you think it's real, then you're gonna you know. <laughs> problems where there aren't any problems right yeah well the word real is interesting yeah i mean well i'll say this you know it's not what you are yeah yeah no i'm i agree with you on that yeah yeah yes you know semantics but I, you know, it's not what you are if you think it is what you are then you're always going to try to free it from itself and you know it's a never-ending game in a sense for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the way I would kind of use that word real, and this, this might just be semantics. Mm -hmm. It's like, like there's like relative real, like, sure. like a simulated real, 
Mm -hmm. But ultimate, real, capital R real, like capital T, truth, that's not to be found. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but we're both still going to obey traffic laws if we're driving. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. Yeah. Okay. So you use this word, um, breakthrough or no, you used a different word. A uh, break point. Break point. Yeah. 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 So, so you said that that painting behind you that you don't really want to sell, that was a break point for a change in your style. Yes. From the angular sharp edges to these circular things. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and it's called Unmanned. Great title. Yeah. And, and so was there anything else that accompanied that um, break point or was, or was that just, or not? Would you say? I, it was just, it was, you know, again, um, like I said, I was in the new apartment and. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. It was just more or less taking a break to decide, am I going to paint in this apartment? Is this apartment large enough to paint in? Or should I move, you know, all my paintings and, you know, brushes and paint knives and tubes to an actual studio. And that piece just was informative to say, hey, you can do it here. Cool. That, yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that, that's interesting because, yeah, change of environment can, mm -hmm. has an impact. Right. So I'm in a smaller space now and, you know, the paintings are, you know, they appear to be a little more messier, but the space is cleaner than I was in a larger place doing hard edge. You know? <laughs> oh, I like that. A little yeah. yin yang. Exactly. So it flipped. Yeah. I was doing clean work in a messy space. Now I'm doing messy <laughs> work in a clean space. So yeah, that was the big thing. You know, this space is smaller. You know, do I really want to mess it up with paint? And I haven't done it yet. So nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, yeah. And I like that technique. Is that when you started the technique with the paint knives? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I dabbled with it, you know, previously, but this is where it really, you know, kind of took off. That was oh. the first painting. Oh man, that, that's one of my favorite aspects of your work. Really, is is, is that those awesome, those really cool textures you get with the paint knife? Yeah, yes, I, I really dig it. Mm. Cool. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Well, um, okay. Well, I'll ask you about just a couple others on your wall before I jump over to the screen share. Sure. Um, I'm curious about the. I think right behind your head, you might have two more, and you've got one showing on camera now. Maybe just one or two more. Oh, you got one more. Yeah, you got the joyous, and then you've got the do. Mm -hmm. You. Yeah. Could you um? Oh, could you move to the other side of the screen? That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, so you, I actually found the Facebook post where you first announced you were going to do a series like that. Yeah. So, could you comment on that series and those two in particular? Um. So I was using this uh, app on you know a previous model of my iPhone. Um. It was just a Helvetica app, you know, just the, the font, essentially. So I was just playing around with the app and just <clears throat> playing with words. And I was like, wow, you know, this is, you know, enjoyable. I can actually do this with painting, you know. I've been, you know, using all the geometric, you know, work previously. But, you know, this is, you know, shape-shifting as well. So just decided to take the words, the letters, and literally just, uh, you know, unscramble them and, make you know different uh each level of the word is a different word you know it's kind of a fractal nature you know right Breaking the word up into uh fractions for the most part but each fraction also being its own word yeah no that's cool man i mean okay so if you look at the first one from my like joyous yeah jo it's like joe ye yo, yo and us Joe yo in us. Yeah. So the Joe yo us isn't, you know, it doesn't make sense, but each word is essentially a word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's cool. Um, well, you've got two words at least in that. So, mm -hmm. or even three, I mean, Joe, isn't that a word for coffee? Like, uh, yeah, sure. Or, you know, I know girls named Joe, you know, Joanne or, you know, there you go. It's like you're saying hi to a girl named Joe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, Joe, you know, yo, you know, hello. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, being, you know, that's. That's cool. And, and then the one you got right next to it, that says, do you. Mm -hmm. 
So that was a piece um, that I did for a, a commission. It was commissioned by a magazine that's uh, unfortunately no longer, you know, in print, but it was called uh, City Arts Magazine. It was just oh. a local uh, arts magazine here in the city right. of Seattle. And um, they were doing this uh, campaign to stay in business for the most part. So they wanted new subscribers and they were giving out these gifts for, you know, these, I guess, tiers of subscriptions. And um, one moment, let me grab something. Sure. Yep. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. So this is one of the Constellation Prizes, Constellation Prizes, you know, for the subscription. Yeah. And uh, essentially, yeah, made that piece. And then they, you know, took it, photographed it, you know, made mugs. And, you know, there were a few other gifts as well. But, yeah, it was, you know, essentially inspired by that. Very cool. Yeah. So, again, uh, it was, you know, the, the phrase, do you, you know, uh, the vibration of the, you know, it's more like a, a homonym in a sense, you know, it's do, D-O, uh, you know, and then you, Y-O-U, in the same sense. Yeah. And, and so, and you're also supportive of that message of be yourself. Exactly. Well, yeah, back then, yeah. <laughs> back then, back then. <laughs> right. Okay. So again, you know, this is when I, you know, essentially believed in myself then, you know. And so, now, so now I understand, you know, again, self is, um, you know, semantic, you know, it can mean various things. But the way we use it mostly is as a person, you know, personal, you know. Well, so, Okay, so from your current perspective, um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm still a big fan of people not like uh, just following like like a Pied Piper, the lead, you know, like I'm still a big fan of like, it's like when you look out in nature, you don't see like a rose trying to be like a sunflower, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. So so how would how would you, I mean, I guess that's the way I would put that, but how would like the do you, I feel like that could still kind of be saying that even, but it's not saying there's like a real you there. It's like life emerging as diversity. Yeah. If I could change it today, I would say be you. Okay. Yeah. Right. Versus a performance doing, you know, an action. Just be. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. And yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of like, when it's well made, like I think that painting really is to your lower left there, um, the black and white. I love stark blacks and whites and all that. Yeah. So what, what, um, yeah, what could you say about that painting? And do you know what that one's called? Um, that is called the illusion of mind. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it, it speaks for itself for the most part. Yeah. Um, I did it for a show at a gallery here called uh, Coca you know, and um, the show was called Artists Who Know How to Fucking Paint, if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that piece and the second piece that, you know, has sold, you know, since. But yeah, um, it was just the illusion of mine. And again, it was just um, at that point, you know, you can see that's one of the hard edge pieces. It was still, you know, curves, but, you know, it's going more or less from the, you know, the angles to curves but still using hard edge, you right. know? Yeah. Cool. Okay, cool. And, and then you got one right behind you that um, I, I recognize as one of your earlier paintings on your Facebook. This yeah. Guy. Yeah. yeah That's the first painting I ever did. Whoa. Yeah. Dude, what a strong start. That's an awesome painting. That's like yeah. an album cover. I mean, yeah. <laughs> dude. so again, that's, you know, that's true hard edge, you know, that's, you know, angles and, you know, cubes and things like that. But yeah, that was essentially um, the first painting where I was like, okay, I've practiced enough. Now I'm going to put something together. I, okay, cool. And, and, you, and, what, and what's that one called? Um, it's called Believe in parentheses Periscope. Mm -hmm. So the Believe aspect, you know, again, you know, this is a long time ago. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, you know, there's essentially three tiers here. Uh, this lower tier is kind of where I saw myself. Um, <laughs> this uh, shape here is actually a periscope. 
So you can see this figure, which I thought was, you know, a representation of what I was then uh, viewing through the periscope and seeing, you know, this larger figure, you know, essentially above the surface. Right. Uh, where I want it to be. Right. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Yeah. What, I mean, what, what a beautiful painting just about the seeker's perspective and journey. Yeah. So, again, I look at this and, you know, I, I you know, I don't laugh, but, you know, I understand what I, you know, believed at the time. And now what I know, you know, it, it, I don't want to say it came into fruition, but essentially everything that I believed then, I no longer believe. I understand that, you know, there's nothing to seek. You know, I am what I am. Well, when, when, well now you're like what what's on you're, you're like the canvas or something now you're just the uh yeah or the wall, the wall yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 cool and and man yeah when you moved to this that other one behind you could, could you say something about that I, I really i love the colors in that one uh this one yeah um what was that piece called oh, gosh let me grab my phone i can look it up <laughs> okay i'll pause it okay. back yeah, that piece, uh, I named it Unloneliness. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's not a word, clearly. But, you know, again, just, you know, at that point, I was just trying to find a word that, dis you know, not describes, but essentially points to what being is. And, yeah. you know, it's just, you know. Uh, could you move to the side so we could... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, keep keep talking, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. But uh, again, it's just, uh, you know, a, a state of, you know, not even a state, but it's just the fact that you, how, you know, you're never lonely, you know, uh, how can you be lonely? How can, you know, you know, you're not, you know, some object, you know, in space, you know what I mean? You know, some, some uh, remote object, you know, away from everything else. You know, you are, you know, the space itself. And yeah, so it's just, you know, again, just playing around with words, you know, um, semantics can be limiting, uh, limiting, and just thinking of a new word that would kind of break the, the fourth wall in a sense. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, well, some people, I mean, what, what's, what's your take on this? Some people, if somebody calls like this, lonely mm -hmm. some people do say it's a lonely thing to realize i guess there are no separate people or mm -hmm. really you know what i mean like i don't know what, what's your take on that it's just not your experience maybe i mean again ultimately loneliness says that you're in what you are you know like you're lonely in a prison of sorts right you know yeah yeah, that there's something separate inside that's stuck mm -hmm. inside something. Right. You know, so it's you know like a solitary confinement or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like like you were saying about like Zod back in the right, right, right. So yeah, yeah you know that doesn't make sense. You know, you know again, even in you know uh, in this apartment building, there's you know folks living all around. You know, like how can <laughs> you know how can I be lonely? Right. Right. Well, um, all right, yeah, and, and there's one more behind you I want to ask about because it is standing out to me um, also. Yeah. That that other black and white, is it totally, I don't know if it's totally black and white. The, the, and, and there's some browns in there and some blues. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? yeah that, that piece I uh, did <clears throat> probably like 2013-ish, and it was called uh, Looking Glass. And again, the same mirror effect. So essentially, if you look at that, um, the mirror is kind of shattering, you know. Oh, yeah. And you can see, you know, the, the space behind it, essentially. Dude, that's cool, man. And, and it kind of reminds me of this background I've got behind me. Yeah. The dis yeah. distant space with all the galaxies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, just this, this idea of a mirror, like it has to break, you know. And when it breaks, you got space. Mm -hmm. you got mirror. Right. Whoa. That's awesome. Yeah. So let me let me ask you this. Um, in, in like, did you were were psychedelics ever a part of your um, journey with any of this stuff? Um, not really. I mean, you know, weed. You know, for the most part. You know, and you know, 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. I was just curious because yeah. I, I bet a lot of other people have been to your art gallery shows. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's happened at least once. Yeah. 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 Right on. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, how about we go ahead and switch to the screen share mode now and mm-hmm. you know, I got like a hundred more of your paintings. We'll just sure. we'll just pick some random ones and just go through it. Cool. All right. Um, let's see if the screen share works. Did I do that right? I don't know. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. So this is another one of the text ones. Uh huh. All so the, yeah, all day I dream about James. <clears throat> Again, uh, this was using the app that I was telling you about before I started, you know, using paper and uh, panel, you know, to oh. make actual art. Uh, this was the app. Um, so essentially, what I did uh, was I created these uh, text pieces on the app. I printed them out. I cut out the letters, you know, the I guess the positive space, leaving a gap, and then I would paint within those gaps for the most part. Okay. Um, this was just playing around. This wasn't, you know, anything serious. It was just, you know, the acronym uh, Adidas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah, you know, nothing nothing too heavy, I guess. All right, cool. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting phrase, though. All day I dream about dreams. But, yeah. yeah again, you know, just the wondering, just the seeking, you know, it was, you know. Totally. All right, so here's the one called Flower Power that I was referring to earlier. That were mm-hmm. like a graphic design you made on a computer, maybe. Yeah, this this wasn't mine. I didn't actually create that. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. It was probably uh, linked to a phrase or a post that I made or something like that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't create that. Oh, right. yeah. It's just, it's just the you know the flower of life, you know, for the most part. Definitely. Well, yeah. So, do you have? Yeah, what are your thoughts on sacred geometry in general? A- any thoughts on that? Um, it's it's all the same thing, you know. I, you know, I try not to you know call it sacred. It's just you know, it you know, it's it's you know, you know, sacred and profanity. You know, it's it's all the same thing. You know, you just toss out those labels, and Do, again, there's no difference between a, a street sign and a painting. Well, I okay. So look, so if we take the word sacred out of it, did mm-hmm. you? Ever, did you ever get into any kind of like golden ratio or like? Oh yeah, oh map, yeah. Map? Okay, so okay. is mm-hmm. that a, is that a part of your process to this day, or is that a phase you went through? Or oh, it was a phase, you know. But yeah, it served its purpose. Cool. Yeah. Right. Right on. All right. So here's one of the early ones. Um, I really, dude, I really like this one. This like an explosion mm-hmm. of color. Yeah, I can't remember what that what the title oh, of that. Is oh, I got it right here. It's um. Oh, cool. F you oh, intensely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was just um, again. This is when I you know, was using the hard edge, and it was just, it was just you know, it was just enjoyable. You know, it, I wasn't painting for a purpose. You know, I wasn't you know necessarily trying to achieve a goal. It was just painting, just to paint. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. just having fun. Exactly, like the title says. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Maybe okay. I like this early one because this is like like a the one of the most mandala like things I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, you got the title of that one. Yeah, gravity all nonsense. (laughs) That title is uh, inspired from uh, the movie A Clockwork Orange. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah, it was something uh, Alex DeLarge quoted in the movie. Oh, and I think since I used, you know, oranges in such a, a bow fashion in this piece, I think I just went with that. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. But again, it was, you know, just looking at it, it was just um, trying to break away from the hard edge, but not knowing necessarily how, you know. Right. Man, that one's got layers to it, dude. Mm-hmm. It's cool. All right. Um I like I like how you you photograph some of these early ones in interesting locations. Yeah, um, I live near a park, and so I tried to you know capture nature because the work was essentially inspired, uh, you know, as far as the city of Seattle is concerned, just the juxtaposition between nature and architecture. So in that, I try to you know uh, be around nature, be around cool architecture to show the similarities. 
Yeah, this piece I remember was called Three. Yeah. And again, just again, the fractal nature of everything. Um, you can see like the large figure that's, you know, um, holding all these pieces together is kind of a, a fractal of what's, you know, inside each uh, level is kind of a, a fracture oh, cool. of the same thing for the most part. That that's same cool. pattern repeating itself. Dude, that's incredible. So, so you, man, so you're, you were into fractals back then. Oh yeah. Still, uh, yeah, still, but yeah, here it was, you know, I was trying to express it in, you know, in a hard edge form, but now I understand just the, you know, everything's connected simply, you know, so yeah. everything, you know, all of existence is a fractal. That's so cool. And, and you know what, even the photograph itself being like in like a place with its own architecture, mm -hmm. it's like zooming out of the painting to the fractal. Yeah. Yeah, so that's ultimately what I was trying to express. Dude, well, you did it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so, um, okay, so was this just another early experiment with words? Yeah, you know, just the vibrations, you know, I'm in was essentially the, uh, I don't even know what I was going with, you know. Yeah. I think I was just taking, yeah, honestly, I don't even remember. But essentially, I, I did, whatever I did, it started off with I'm in and it came back to I'm in. So it's more or less like a, uh, a circumspection, you know, it kind of started at one point and came back to that original. Uh, yeah. That's cool. And, and right before the, the going back, you got, um, um, yeah, exactly. So you got all these, you know, yeah. Dude, that's deep. <laughs> I mean, if people want to read into that, that that's, that's beautifully deep that it goes there and returns yeah. there. And yeah. you get to this ohm, but it goes back to the I'm in. Yeah. You know, there's no in there. You know, there's, you know, again, there's just whatever I was, you know, whatever uh, pattern I used, it was definitely a, a breaking yeah. down of, you know, illusion right. back to the fact that I'm in. Right. Do, do you have any thoughts on the, the illusory universe, if we want to call it that? Like, you know, like there's story, like the, going back to the matrix, which we talked about in our last talk, this idea of like revolutions of like the universe is getting like the big bang and then it goes away and it's just this endless cycle of. Um, for the most part, I, you know, from what I understand about existence as a whole, like it, it is one cycle, you know, um, yeah. we think of, you know, it being time-based, but time isn't secular, you know, it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's not secular. It's, um, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's trying to emulate the cycles, but it's a, so if you think about seasons, you know, um, winter, spring, summer, fall, you know, they have, you know, they're essentially based in time. We're looking at the cycles and we're trying to, you know, put them in time for the most part, you mm -hmm. know, break this one cycle into four cycles and that's not the way it is. Right. So right. seeing the one cycle as it is, like it's, it's just, you know, um, look at a tree, you know, a tree sprouts from the ground, you know, it dies, goes back to the ground, you know, another tree sprouts. Like it's just this, you know, so that's cool. As long as you understand that you're a, not a part of the cycle, you know, you can enjoy the cycle. You can enjoy the earth rotating, you know, without saying that you've um, aged a year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bringing time into the equation. Like uh, the universe, you know, it has nothing to do with time. You know, existence has nothing to do with time. Time is a, a concept that, you know, consciousness created, you know, knowingly or unknowingly. And now it's, you know, is perceived as reality and it creates a lot of confusion. Um, so essentially um, this cyclical, cyclical nature of existence, it's just, it has no meaning. It's just, it's like a dance, like we've discussed before, you know, uh, it's just, you know, atoms and parts, it's, it's vibration, you know, different pieces of vibration. When you make it more than that, then you create issues. I remember this. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't then ain't zen. Yeah, then it ain't zen. Um, I displayed it here as a, a diamond, but essentially it was turned over. So this is uh, the southeast uh, 
side is essentially flat now. So now it's just a square. Okay. Yeah, and I, I can't remember if I... Oh, yeah, I know what happened. Um, I was commissioned to do this for a box set of art. Uh, it's a, a gallery uh, that's no longer um, operating as a gallery, but uh, is still doing, you know, uh, the owner of the gallery is still working in the arts for the most part. She's mostly writing. The gallery is called our Bridge uh, Productions. And what uh, she did, uh, Sharon Arnold is the name of the gallerist. What she did was created 10 box sets. Essentially, she wanted to make like mini uh, starter, you know, sets for, you know, aspiring collectors. Mm. So I did 10 small paintings like this. This piece is only like, I think, eight by eight inches. You know, it's a small piece. Yeah. So uh, there were two artists. Uh, it was uh, a guy named um, Guy, actually. <laughs> guy um, and I, we did two paintings. And then there was a writer who actually wrote something about uh, the paintings and about, you know, you know, something that kind of related to what Guy and I were doing. And these were packaged into 10 different box sets. Uh, each painting was, you know, unique, completely different. And um, yeah, so that painting sewed in a box set. Cool, cool. And how, how, yeah, how long does it take you, did it take you to paint this one? I'm curious. Um, I'm guessing, you know, if I had to say hours, probably about 10, 12 hours. Oh my God. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Man. Okay. I'm not going to ask how long it took you to paint the mural. Maybe we should jump to that mural real quick. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's see if I can find that. Uh, um, there it is. Okay. Yeah. And what's this one called? Oh, I, I didn't get the name of it. You it's called, uh, it's called Floret. Floret. Yeah. That's it. Oh, it's so beautiful, man. Oh my Thank God. You. Yeah. Yeah. That piece was really enjoyable. Um, so essentially um, it was inspired, you know, comically by, I think I was eating either uh, broccoli or cauliflower, you know, for dinner and just, uh, you know, chopping it up, you know, just seeing all the different, you know, florets that, you know, combine to make this one flower essentially. So I wanted to express that same sentiment in the painting, you know, each of these, uh, individual paintings and even uh, patterns in the paintings uh, combined to make one large painting. So what I did was um, I took 33 foot paintings on unstretched canvas and I painted you know, each of the 30 paintings. I took each of the paintings and cut it up into uh, four sections, you know, and then uh, those sections were 16 by 16 inch squares. So in total it was 120 16 by 16 inch squares. You know, so they're like separate paintings in a sense. Then took wallpaper paste and literally applied these squares onto the wall. Oh, wow, on the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, and, 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 where, and where is this? Uh, this was a commission for Facebook. So it's in one of their corporate buildings here in town. Oh, dude, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Man, you think, you think Zuck's gonna walk by this someday? Or might it have already? Sure, probably. Yeah. <laughs> if he's in town, sure. Oh, you know, right. but again, you know, uh, there's, you know, so they have, you know, that building that I, you know, they have a few buildings in town and this building probably had like 11 or 12 floors. So this isn't the only piece there, you know, there's, you know, different pieces from different other artists as well. It's very cool. And, and gosh, well, can you even say how many hours this might have taken you to make going from the eight by eight to the, what was that? A hundred and something by. Yeah. So essentially um, each, it was 33 foot paintings divided into four, which made 120 separate paintings. The paintings themselves, the 30 paintings took probably about two months which was pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but I was really waking up, you know, like six or seven o'clock in the morning and paying to like, you know, eight or nine at night, you know, uh, you know, five days a week, you know, just so I can, you know, just spit it out, you know, and um, yeah. it probably took about a week to divide them all, you know, into the 120. 
and then um, probably a week to actually install it as well. Cool, man. Mm -hmm. Good job, dude. Great. This is incredible. I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and the florette, all from the inspiration of broccoli. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, again, you know, we yeah. say it all the time, but it's, it's all one, you know, so, yeah. you know, broccoli is, is a sign as well. You know, it's pointing to the oneness, you know, and these florets seem separate, but, you know, in actuality, they're one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I... I don't know if you want to comment on this post. I just found this interesting. Do mm -hmm. you remember what this was referring to? Yeah, I did. So this I didn't create. You didn't create but, this, but yeah. No. But uh, what the uh, <clears throat> the artist was expressing is uh, something at the bottom. These bars at the bottom had to do with lies in the Bible, <laughs> and you know the patterns of these lies interacting is what you see in the red. Right. Like, like the red is like the con where they contradict each other. Right. Right. Yeah. I yeah. So I just thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. That, and even just the idea of visualizing things like that with art is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. No doubt. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So from here on out, maybe, um, can you see the bar on the left with the little thumbnails? Yeah. Okay. So how about I just scroll through it? And if you see one you want to comment on, just I'll, Click on it. Like. Let's go with this one. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, that piece was called Thinking Without Thinking. Or Thinking Without Thought, actually. Or, um, or that the, piece, the post says Thought Without Thinking. Yeah, Thought Without Thinking, yeah. But yeah, that's actually right here. Oh, that's, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so it's a smaller piece. But okay. yeah, it was just, um, you know, again, uh, Sensing, you know, I can't remember when it was done, but it was just a, a notion that, you know, thinking is is something that's happening, you know, not something that I'm doing, you know. And if I want to be in charge of thinking, then there's going to be some trouble. <laughs> right. Yeah, that ownership is where the trouble comes in. Right, right. So, yeah, so thinking, you know, so thinking and raining, you know, is something that happens. You know, the wind blowing is something that happens. There's no one behind it you know there's not an uh an agency you know making it uh doing it you know it's, it's just something that is naturally occurring got it got it cool man okay let's let's go to the other one you thought it was yeah let's... yeah that one um yeah. that's uh impersonal space if i remember correctly let's see that's correct <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that was one of the first pieces that sold at the gallery that now represents the work that i um that, you know, th that I paint. Um, and that piece was more or less just, um, we, we think of the notion as personal space and, you know, there's truly no personal space. There's no, you know, there's no boundary. There's no, there's no person with personal space essentially. So just trying to express that in that same notion. Um, using these brush strokes or knife strokes, what I call them, just yeah. to kind of mark out, you know, this false perception. You know, I did a whole painting and didn't like it, it seemed kind of personal. So I literally went over it, not in protest, but just like, you know, initially just to start over from scratch and then kind of liked what I was doing <laughs> and just left it like that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, I love the, yeah, I love the use of the white to get it's such an interesting effect all those um knife strokes of white yeah i'm working on a um i'm going to do a uh, a five foot by six foot painting just like that uh for a show that i have coming up um in august at the gallery awesome yeah yeah there's a, it does it has an effect that almost makes it feel like three-dimensional mm -hmm. it gives this feeling of depth that's really true right. right yeah very cool thank you yeah. All right. So I'll just scroll through. Just tell me the color. Man, I love the colors. Of the, I love this color combination on this one. Yeah, oh. thanks. Yeah. A buddy of mine uh, bought that a few years back. Um, all, can't all, all, all is the well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just a play off of the phrase all is well, you know, same thing. But just again, you know, the, you know, the, the vacuum, the void, you know, 
love consciousness, just being this, this endless well, you know, and um, that was just, you know, a way of expressing that. Man, that, that color combination just pops. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go back to that. Comment. It, was a, it was a really nice uh, combination, you know, looking at it, I haven't seen this painting in, in years, but yeah, it's something that I would definitely like to return to. There's this one album cover I got to send you just to get your take on. It's really interesting color combination by The Knife. Have you heard of that group? Uh, no. Yeah, they, they've got an album called, um, Sh- I think it's called Shaking the Habitual, but it's a really interesting color. I think it's like a pink and green, but I'll, I'll send it. It's, it reminds me of this because it really just pops. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, let's keep going. I, I like this one too. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop on all of them because I like all your okay. paintings. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, the realization and actualization mm-hmm. of one's authentic self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, again, you know, it's like we discussed before, you know, um, self being, you know, semantic in a sense, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, some use it as, you know, consciousness. Some use it as illusion, you know. Um, I don't like to use it as um, truth simply because when we use it, we're mostly using it in a, to say, you know, personal, you know, um, you know, the physical self. So um, I think the word selfless, you know, explains it all. You know, it's just a great word to say that, you know, what we think is self is, is not physical, you know, the word self. Yeah. And, and, and was there anything about the colors or shapes in this one that like, um, so you got the white there, you know, um, all the colors, you know, white, I'm not sure if you're aware of like how the, the color spectrum is, but white is at one end. Um, it is the, the total of all color, essentially. Mm. And black is the absence of all color. Right. So you think about existence and, you know, from a, a color perspective, um, especially, you know, with the yin yang, you know, uh, white is everything, black is nothing. So got the black black in the background, you know. So again, if you think of yin yang as the white section is is all color and then the black section is no color. Um, The furthest out is the white, the furthest back is the black here. So it was just a saying that, you know, the black is, the, the true, you know, the true nature, the white is essentially the expression. And when you identify with the expression, like colors are fine, you know, they're beautiful, but they're, you know, a, a means of expression. They're not the truth, you know. Man, that's awesome. It's, it's, it, this is like the coolest yin yang symbol I've ever seen. Maybe. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. All right. Um, Let's see. Well, you got a couple that are kind of similar in style here. Which one do you want to do? Let's go with the color. Let's go with the colorful one. The, the yeah, that one. Yeah, and it's called Serenity. Yeah. I mean, it it says what it says, you know. Yeah. I use those colors. You know, that the the colors are the spectrum a lot. You know, like I said, the red through violet. Um, just because, again, you know, they. I feel like, you know, if, again, if you're expressing white, you know, they are, you know, the best way to express white, I feel. Expressing white with separate colors. Yes. You know, the the, colors of the spectrum. Correct. You know, white are breaking, you know, into the, you know, from the prism and breaking to these, these, these colors. Man, that's so cool. So again, you know, if you, so if you could take the yin yang symbol, take the white and crack it, you know, it would break into, you know, these colors. God, yeah, and then you got the black background or the side right. is black. Right. But, you know, you can't do that with the black is, you know, it's, it's unbreakable. So right. again, you know, the the black is off limits, you know, you can't do anything with it. You know, it's the absence of light, it's the absence of, you know, color of um, impermanence, essentially. So the white is expressing the impermanence 
you know, everything that can, that comes and goes essentially. Right. So again, the yin yang, you know, you can look at this as a yin yang symbol. Uh, the, all the colors are the white and the black is, you know, the background and, and the size essentially. So it's the same, the same thing, you know. Man, that's so cool. That's so cool. I'm, I'm also just thinking in my mind of the, the Pink Floyd album cover, the dark side yeah. of the moon. Yeah. So yeah, look at that album. Like it's essentially, you got the black there in the background. Yeah. <clears throat> got the prism. And then the white is essentially, you know, exploding into, you know, all these colors. Hey, it, it, in my album cover, maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Saw the same thing. <laughs> right. All right. Well, let's, let's keep going. Um, this one's interesting because it, it is some. This one feels almost like a postmodern take or a deconstructive take on something. It it's called imaginary mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just saying that you know essentially everything that I think is mine isn't really mine. You know, I don't truly own anything. Yeah, there's no no owner. When I create an owner, then you know. I create possession, essentially. Yeah. And man, this painting it has a really intense use of negative space and black and yeah. white. Yeah. And again, just playing with that black and white and, you know, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like someone who has missing memories or mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's like little flashes of awareness both ways of like sure. the ulti ultimate awareness of the black or white, mm -hmm. the relative of this, and then this kind of interesting off white, not quite white space. Yeah. So essentially there's texture underneath here as well. So I painted over a, a, an older painting. So you get to see the texture underneath. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. So um, I'll just keep scrolling. If one stands out to you. Oh, this one. This is another interesting one. Yeah. Um, what was the name of that piece? Um, this is Forbidden Fruit. Yeah. So, yeah, just, you know, <clears throat> the nature of duality, you know, duality as essentially forbidden fruit. Uh, the myth about, you know, Adam and Eve, you know, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you know, um, essentially uh, that tree is representing. So tree of life is, you know, is a metaphor for, you know, the one reality. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is uh, a metaphor for duality. Um, duality essentially being the forbidden fruit, you know, growing from this tree. Um, wow. We, yeah, we eat the forbidden fruit. We, you know, ingest duality and it takes, it's, you know, we're expelled from the garden essentially, you know, from doing that. So, you know, it's just a, a way to, you know, to say, you know, don't um, eat the fruit. <laughs> you know, uh, the metaphor we use today is, you know, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah. But they're saying the same thing, you know. Um, ultimately, duality is not the way, you know. Eternal life is, is enough. Man, don't eat the fruit. Well, okay, so first of all, like, the shapes on this one, was there any significance with, like, why you went with this, like, more just a square and rectangles? Um, so, essentially, the, what's on the top there is more of, um, you know, the tree. And you can look at the, the colors at the bottom, the rectangles. It's just more like the, the foundation. Right. I got it. Got it. Okay, cool. I, Gosh, I want to ask you about Plato's cave, but I don't know. Maybe we should keep. Yeah. So, just real quick question: When you're talking about this, for, because I just heard this description of the Plato cave metaphor recently, mm -hmm. this part of the story that I didn't really hear emphasized before, where like the so the guy wakes up in the cave and he realizes everyone's looking at shadows in the cave and they think that's reality. Mm -hmm. He goes outside the cave. He's like, holy shit, there's a sun out here and real stuff. And he goes back in to tell them, hey, like the sun's <laughs> out here. <laughs> but like the end of the story, and then he's like, you're just looking at shadows. But what, mm -hmm. But the way the story ends is they kill him. They don't want to believe him. And they're like, they kill him for telling the truth. Definitely. That's, so, it's, you know, same thing with Christ, you know. Yeah. He's trying to say, hey, you know, 
you don't have to do this. You know, so so I look at the Bible essentially as you know the, the Adam and Eve story. Um, <clears throat> you know, we we fell from grace by subscribing to the forbidden fruit from eating this. You know, we lost track of you know the, the original tree, the original tree of life, and then the Christ uh, figure comes in to say, "Hey, you know, we don't have to do this." <laughs> <laughs> They say, fuck you, and then they kill him. But in killing him, you know, he's essentially killing off, you know, what he thought he was as well. You know, so he's he's leaving. The, he's the death is more metaphorical about him just leaving the cave for good. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, so, so it's not like there's a there's a separate uh, separate entities killing a person. The person is being killed off essentially with both metaphors dude i love it you just brought it to the that whole other level right so yeah it's, it's the end of the person you know right mm -hmm. oh, man. oh man so if i tell you hey you know um we aren't these bodies you don't have to suffer and you say fuck you man you know i can't take that personally i have to let you you know your your thought of you know your process your thought process, I have to let that go. And with doing that, I let go of, you know, my thought process as well. So again, it's that shedding of, of the person. Wow. Got it, man. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, I'm so yeah. glad, I'm so glad I asked you that you, you, I asked you that question because you could, your answer is awesome. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, so metaphor, you know, all these myths are, are great if you don't take them literally, you know? Right. Right. Oh, dude, look at the texture on that one. Yeah. Oh, um, man, this one's called Delightfulness. Yeah, that piece was bought recently by uh, a uh, college, a local college here in town. But yeah, it's just, again, it's another piece that, you know, you know, thinking of words that we don't have, you know, in our lexicon to describe, you know, again, of course it's indescribable, but even the word indescribable is describing what is indescribable, you know, beyond description. So again, just thinking of, of, you know, just cool words, you know, so I'm not using, reusing words that we already know that can be misconstrued. Man, and, and there's something about that texture. I love the color of that hue. Is that like a blue kind of? So essentially it's, it's black and white. And what you see is essentially uh, the black gesso is a different black, different hue of black from the paint. So you're seeing that, you know, it's a, it's a gradient of sorts of blacks. You know, one black is darker than the other. So you get to see the underneath, you know, from the gesso. It's like a purplish black. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's. You know, it, it's, just, it's the effect of the gesso, you know, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, like that translucence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then like, the the way the white is kind of like wild on this one, mm -hmm. it, it almost feels like something's breaking out or breaking in. Yeah. But again, you know, same, same uh, symbolism, you know, the, the yin yang, you know, you got the white, which is uh, tangible. And then the black is the intangible. You know? it, and then the you white. got, a... sorry. <laughs> well, you've got those other little parts that where like the black is super black, like right mm -hmm. here. Yeah, so that's the gesso actually. Awesome. Yeah. So that that was the original, uh, and wow. then yeah, everything else uh, yeah is on top of it for the most part. So the other black that you see is like again, um, pretty much any. I mean, there's there's these gesso spots that are still exposed. Yeah. But everything else is a, a, a warmer black. So the gesso is kind of a cooler black, and um, they just happen to interplay that way. It's one of my favorites, man. I love this one. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, this one's cool. I don't remember the name of that one, but Unpop unpopulated. Yeah, again, just uh, the idea of population, population being illusory. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, there's not a million people on Earth. You know, there's no people on Earth, you know. Right. We've created these identities. You know, we don't we don't talk about the population of mosquitoes or population, <laughs> you know, fleas, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. we've created, we created this separate entity and, you know, 
you feel like you have to be a part of, you know, whatever's going on. And the fear of missing out, all that crazy stuff is rooted in population. Peer pressure is rooted in the, the belief that you have peers, you know, where essentially everyone is you. Damn. Love it. So we got serenity beyond suffering. By the way, is the white part of it here or is this a cropping? A cropping. Okay, okay. Then I'll yeah. try to zoom in so we... Yeah, so essentially this piece was just a, a piece I did on paper. Um, just trying, you know, different techniques. Again, I just woke up and decided to try something different. Um, cool. I think it's some water or something got on it, so I had to throw it away, but yeah. On paper, okay, wow. Yeah, it was a smaller piece. It was like, yeah, it's eight by 10 inches, so it's, it's, it's tiny. So serenity beyond suffering. Mm -hmm. And it, again, it speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, let's, let's see what this. I like these colors. This looks like a detail of something. Yeah, that's the detail of a piece. Yeah, no reflection, no shadow. <laughs> um, again, just, you know, the the one reality not having a reflection because it's not form and not having a shadow because it's not form. <laughs> you know, shadow or reflection belongs to form essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we look at the, the night sky, it's not a shadow, you know, it's the absence of form, you know. Right. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. All right, so um, this one looks cool. Yeah, that's a piece called Music. Nice. Yeah. Um, a friend was doing, this was during like the pandemic, kind of at the beginning, uh, but uh, she was doing uh, something for the month, I think it was April. And um, she had a, like a theme for every day, you know, where she was, you know, day, you know, the first of April, I'm going to, you know, the theme will be, uh, flowers, you know, the second will be um, grass, third will be clouds. And one of the days just happened to be music, you know, and so, okay, I'll participate for this one day. So that was just the one piece that I did. But she did essentially 30. And were, um, the pieces she did were, you know, pretty small. But um, this was my contribution to the music piece. And again, it's one, another one of the first pieces that sold in the gallery. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that orange, that yellow. Thanks. Yeah. Um, ooh, it's like blue and red. Yeah. The time before time. Again, it's just um, expressing timelessness for the most part. And you got the duality there with the blue and red. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Little detail of some seeker supposition syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that piece, I, I think I painted over this piece essentially, you know, with another piece because uh, I didn't really like the way, it, you know, it came out. I thought it could have been better. Like I tried the, the same white thing that um, the impersonal space had, but it didn't really work out as well on this piece. But essentially what it was saying was, um, you know, the idea of a seeker, you know, supposing there's a seek, supposing there's a seeker, you know, is a, it's a, it's a disease. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> certainly causes disease. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Love is not a verb. Love the colors on this one. Oh man. So again, this is one where that same white uh, impersonal space technique worked out well. Um, yeah, just saying again, you know, love is not a verb. It's not something that we do. Um, I can't do love. I can't make love. Um, love is. Love is. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This one. One truth, one assumption. Yeah. Um, same thing. You know, one truth is, you know, the one truth. One assumption is I'm not the one truth. <laughs> yeah. I like this. 
through the seats. Yeah, no love lost or gained. You know, again, love isn't uh, something we do. It's not something that is tangible. It's not something I can gain. It's not something I can give away. I, I like this aesthetic of the black with the minimal mm -hmm. and the use of gold too in this one. Yeah, that's actually a, a really um, kind of a dark yellow. Okay. Uh, yellow ochre, but it's, it, it has gold qualities to it. It's more like a, a mustard, like a deep mustard. Okay, yeah. But it's, it's almost like these bubbles coming out of the void. I love Yeah, or, you know, like ripples, you know, on the surface of water, something like that. Yeah, you, you ever think about that um, or, or look into, like, quantum physics and this idea of, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess there's, like, there's this one theory called M theory that mm -hmm. we're in a bubble universe and the bubbles, when they bump up against each other, the neighboring universes, that creates a big bang. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but yeah, I, I just again, I just see it all. You know, I get you know all the the, the science you know behind it, but it's it's ultimately um, trying to label everything. It's it's just one dance, and it's beautiful. Nice, yeah. There's something, the colors in this with that technique, there's something about it that kind of reminds me of like the, I don't know, like the Renaissance and like the gold, something like Halo-ish about these circles to me too. Uh-huh. Yeah, what's cool about this piece too, I don't do it anymore, but yeah, at the end of days, <laughs> that's great. But um, <clears throat> when I finish with this, I think the reason it kind of gives off a Renaissance vibe is that when I went over it, or well, when I finished it, I went over it with a light layer of gold. Really? Oh. Yeah. So it kind of has a goldish or a, a brownish hue to it, you know, like a tint to it almost, a golden tint. Yeah, this this almost feels to me like like, like a postmodern take on like, like a baby Jesus and Mother Mary somewhere behind there. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, but yeah. Um, I still have that piece. Um, again, the title is The End of Days. Yeah. And um, spelled it, you know, D-A-Z-E instead of D-A-Y-S. But saying ultimately these, this days is essentially rooted in the belief that, you know, time is real, you know, that we're going through multiple days, you know. So, yeah, the end of, the end of assuming that days are real is the end of the days. You know, it's not Groundhog Day every day. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah, no, that's interesting. So, so like my band name, this album cover behind me, it was the cover for my self-titled album as my band name Days of Heaven, D-A-Z-E. Oh, cool. And I never really knew what I meant by that. Other, <laughs> other than it, it felt like a way to kind of describe something beyond an identity, mm -hmm. like being in a daze of heaven. Yeah. It, it was also a reference to some movies I liked by mm -hmm. filmmakers that live here in Austin. Richard Linklater made Dazed and Confused. Yeah. And then there's this movie called Days of Heavens um, by Terrence Mal Malick, who lives here. Yeah, I have that movie. I love that movie. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, so I, the end, yeah, I know it's interesting. The end of days. You know, and the guy who I just interviewed, um, Robert Saltzman, like he's the language he uses is all about like awakening. And he's, he describes mm -hmm. being awake as just being honest with your experience, basically. Yeah. Again, yeah. 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 Yes. I can agree with that. Again, just, you know, like I said uh, earlier, uh, one truth, one assumption. Um, being honest to say that this assumption is the root of all confusion. <laughs> And the root of what? Sorry, I cut you off. Of, of all confusion. Yeah. You know, it's, and essentially it's not even mine. It's whoever, you know, I think I am, you know. So, uh, yeah. yeah. U UG would say, like, people would say, like, like there's this one interview with, like, Byron Katie and UG Krishnamurti. Mm -hmm. And she says, at one point in the conversation, she says to him, like, UG, I don't think you really believe what you just said. 
And he said, no, you're right. I don't believe it. This is the world's belief. It's not mine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. But the world is essentially a metaphor for, you know, this, this one assumption, this one untruth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There, yeah. That is, that is accepted as truth. So it doesn't, it's not even, you know, it doesn't have a life of its own. You know, it's, it's, it's fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, here's some cool colors, man. Um, basic. That's yeah. I um, <clears throat> can't remember what this was about, but I think, it, again, just basic as, as, you know, speaking of, you know, the, or an original sense, you know. Just, oh. just a, yeah, just from scratch, essentially. Um, again, just uh, the colors as the one expression, the black, you know, same thing. Um, I traded this, uh, another guy who I, whose work I really, really, really dig. Uh, we traded pieces, uh, gave him this for a piece that he did on paper, you know, and yeah. Cool. Cool. Let's see. Uh, this one's kind of cool. Roomless. Yeah, that's, um, you can't really tell now, but this is a, a black on black piece. So there's two shades of black. Oh, it is. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, the lighting kind of brightens it a bit, but yeah, oh, it's essentially two shades of black on black. Man, you know, I love your black on black paintings. I, I don't think I got any of them, but, okay. but people could go to your Facebook and see those. I, I love that series. Which, and I guess this is one of them. Would you like to comment on that series? Of um, Just every now and then, I just feel the, the sense to create a black on black piece, you know? Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's not dualistic, but it's just, you know, um, Frank Stella, uh, an artist that I really was inspired by initially. Uh, he did these black on black paintings, but they weren't like this. They were, you know, they had, you know, essentially exposed canvas, um, but everything else is black. And I wanted to kind of uh, uh, make a nod to that in a sense, and, you know, do my own black on black paintings. And, so it's just, you know, went through different techniques and, you know, mixing different blacks, you know, making essentially a warm black and then a cool black and, you know, having those two play together. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, the same college that bought the, uh, the white on the black and white piece that you really liked uh, bought this as well. And then they commissioned a gold piece to a company. So they bought three pieces, which is pretty grateful for Awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, here, this one's got some solid, pretty solid colors. Uh, yeah, this piece is um, <clears throat> it's actually a, a four by six foot, and that's a, a detail shot of it. Oh, okay. Um, but it's a much larger piece. Uh, a buddy of mine commissioned this a while back. Yeah, probably, gosh, three years ago. But again, you know, was when I was starting to use the curves, but it was still hard edge, so I still hadn't broke away from that hard edge. And then here you got one with the texture on top. Mm -hmm. It's neither happy nor sad. Yeah. <laughs> Again, happy and sad uh, being expressed as dualistic. You know, uh, to want to be happy is to want to be sad. You know, but nobody wants to be you know happy. Nobody really wants to be happy but they don't know what, you know, they really want to be. And essentially being is enough. Being is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, happy, you know, happy is on the positive scale, you know, sad is on the negative scale, you know, so those two are inseparable. You know, your happiness is your hat is your sadness. You know, what comes up must go down. What goes up must come down. Right. Harmonious. This was a piece um, I did these uh, for uh, an art museum here, uh, a local art museum called the Bellevue Art Museum. Um, I did these flags. I was commissioned to do some flags. So these pieces were essentially scanned and uh, the, printed on, um, I can't remember what it was, um, what the flag was made out of, but essentially 
um, this piece is, I think, um, maybe, gosh, I don't even know the dimensions, but. Oh, it'll probably say um, 10 by 10. Okay, so yeah. So essentially the the board is 10 by 10, but right. yeah, I'm trying to remember what the, the actual painting is. It's probably more like six by 10, if right. I guess. Yeah. But, but essentially I did uh, probably about 15 or 20 of them. And they essentially were made into flags to like uh, four by six, you know, uh, foot flags <laughs> and flown, you know, around the museum. Oh, this man. Was, yeah, that's uh, another flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just showing, I, I got another one of them, Unworried. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So do you have pictures somewhere of the, them as flags? Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can find some and send them to you. Cool, yeah. yeah. Um, but right. Definitely my Instagram. On your okay, so people can find that on your Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I like th this one. Feels like a different style. Consciously unbecoming. Yeah. Um, again, um, the word becoming, you know, is is almost like a striving, you know, achieving in a way. Uh, being isn't becoming anything. You know, becoming is. Uh, it's not real. Essentially, it's illusory. So. Um, Unbecoming, uh, it seems the way we use it semantically has a negative connotation. So uh, consciously unbecoming gives it uh, not even a positive connotation, but it takes away the negativity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and going with the purple background on this one instead of white or black, what? Yeah. Just, uh, you know, understanding that I could uh, manipulate um, not necessarily the truth, but the way, you know, for art, I could uh, uh, manipulate the expression. So instead of uh, um, black being the background, use it as one of the shapes and then make him purple in the background. It was just playing around. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Wasn't trying to make a statement or anything. Yeah. No, that black really stands out and, and the white. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's cool. Here's so, the so, so both pieces, that and this, um, <clears throat> essentially what I was inspired by was uh, the text pieces. Oh, yeah. Okay. So having, you know, you know, uh, letters, you know, just kind of in a row and then stacked on top of each other, they inspire these. And this one's called Openly God. Mm -hmm. What is that? What, what, what did you mean by that? Um, just, I was using the phrase, <laughs> I was using the phrase, uh, openly gay. Ah. Just <laughs> instead of, you know, so you got the opening, you got the G, you know, with three letters. And so I just took away the A, Y, and added O, D. Got it. Got yeah. it. So yeah. you know, just trying to be clever with words. No, that's cool. And, and, and what does God mean to you, like, at this point? Uh, God is just, uh, you know, again, the void, you know, love. God is love. It's being. Yeah. yeah. So, again, you know, semantically, it's, it's, put it this way, it's not a deity. Got it. It's not got something it. to worship. Oh, here. This might be a good one to end on. Mm -hmm. I like this one. Yeah, Primary Prime Attire. Yeah. Uh, this piece was a commission for uh, an auction. Um, it was a car dealership, maybe, or having an auction. So the, the, <laughs> the theme of the, uh, the auction was um, um, tires or something to that effect. <laughs> yeah. It, this is like one of the most psychedelic images I've ever seen. Yeah. So, yeah. So again, this was actually the first time I used circles in a paint. Wow. Cool. Yeah. But essentially uh, got the hard edge and, you know, I just, you know, there's a tire in the middle, essentially, you know, you just look at the, the silver, it's like a hubcap. Yeah, this, this is like the tire of the universe or something. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I was using primary tones, you know, there's um, that black, what you see is black is actually a really dark blue, you know, in the patterns. In the center, it's actually black. That's the only true black in the thing. Everything else is a really dark blue. So there's two shades of blue. There's a shade of red, a shade of uh, orange, and then white for the most part. And yeah, just uh, using the circle and yeah, more or less like a spectrum of sorts. <laughs> The primary attire yes. it feels like a nod to the thing you said 
about how you took off the artist. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, but using a tire as a tire for the car. Yeah, it's a good pun. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, here, I'm going to stop the screen share on that note. Man, that was like a psychedelic journey going through all those full screen <laughs> images, man. Oh, my God. Cool. I haven't seen some of those in years. Hmm. Awesome. Well, man, that was a lot of fun. So, like, yeah, any if people want to find you, I mean, I'll have your Instagram link. Mm -hmm. You're also on Facebook, and you post a lot of really cool um, spiritual messages on there. From you, yeah. sometimes you're reposting, sometimes it's yeah. thing. And... Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you post the Instagram, um, yeah, that should be enough. Um, they can also, if they want to contact the gallery, uh, the gallery information is on the Instagram page as well. Yeah, uh, it was called a uh, J Reinhardt Gallery, and it's here in Seattle, Washington. Cool, and and you're still doing um, commissions too? Oh yeah, anytime. Yeah, working on uh, the show right now and actually working on a commission for another mural, uh, not like uh, the one that I did previously with Facebook, but kind of a completely different style, kind of like the, the music piece that you liked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of similar to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll shoot you a picture of uh, the template, you know, the mock-up that I did for them. Is this one going to take two months as well? Uh, probably a week, I'd say. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm actually drawing or painting right on the wall, so. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. All right, cool, man. A any other final thoughts you want to you wanna end on or say before we end? Uh, no, I mean, I'm just uh, honored to, you know, to be able to do this, you know, with you. Man, yeah. the honor is mine. And, and I, haven't, I haven't recorded the introduction to this video yet, but I will. And, okay. But I, I think so something I want to say either there or here or both is that I haven't let people know this is my second interview with you, but it's probably like our fifth conversation, maybe sixth. Right. And when I first reached out to you, that was like probably what I consider like the end period of my seeking answers, still trying to get all these different things that I, to connect or something like I've heard from different people and my, my own thing. And, I just want to say, man, like talking to you is like a real, I don't, I don't want to say it caused anything, but I just really appreciate the, um, the, the apparent effect that it had when we first spoke those couple of times. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, man. I mean, you're, you're, you're clearly speaking from your own experience, from your own heart. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm, I feel, I'm grateful that, you know, I found you on Facebook and, Grateful you've done these couple of talks with me so far. Cool. Yeah. Many more. Mm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Ne if we do it, yeah, the next one, we could go over some of the quotes, but maybe some of those other pieces of art you like from other people. Sure. Awesome. Definitely. Awesome, dude. Well, all right. I'm going to end the recording. Then. <laughs> yeah.